Welcome back to another video. Probably not many left. Maybe one or two more. And we'll call this finished. Okay, I think this is gonna work after all. So I just ended up spraying a lot more 3M77 on the fabric side and just a little bit on the foam so it wouldn't eat in. And then did this test and I'm pulling it off and it's, it's very secure. It probably doesn't look like it, but really having to yank on it to get it off. I think that's a good test, and that's the method I'm going to use to cover the interior. Uh, hi, we're going to take Stella. Julia surprises us to visit home. My little sis. It seems no matter how many times I measure with my angle finder, it's really hard to get these miters exactly perfect. I spent a whole day just doing one side of the trim. But I did my best, I got pretty close using three quarter inch number eight self-tapping screws to fasten the trim down. Okay, and up. I don't feel like I'm doing much. <laughs> Jenny, really at all, is she? Yeah. Thanks for the help, sisters. Had to get it up high enough on the one side to get my drill under there. Back and forth and back and forth, measuring a million times, cutting once, figuring out I was still wrong and starting over again. This aluminum trim is really expensive, nearly $500 Canadian. You might wonder why the heck would you spend so much on this thing? Well, there's a term called escalation of commitment. Gotta pop in the vinyl insert now. This is the stuff that I bought. Oh. I tried a few different ways to get this popped in. This way didn't work very well. So then I wrapped a piece of the aluminum composite paneling with a rag, and that seemed to do the job nicely. A little tricky around the corners there, but overall went in real nice, real easy. And it looks great. Really, really happy with it. Looking good. Time to turn it around and work on the other side. Another full day. Who would have thought? Underneath the trim, I'm using this product from Dicor. But it's got felt on one side and you just push it down like this. It's supposed to be really waterproof. And that'll create a seal. So today I'm gonna to go all around. I'm gonna very carefully measure each angle, divide it by two to get my cutting angles and then I'll do my miter cuts all at once. I'm not gonna go back and forth. I think that just leads to possibility for error. So this side should be perfect. We'll see. It was not perfect. It was more of the same. It seemed no matter how hard I tried, the miters were off just a little bit, but I'll live with it. Certainly can't see it from this angle. While I was screwing on the bottom trim, I hit some gaps. I had to remind myself where in the frame there was nothing to screw into, so I just popped open the SketchUp model. Pretty handy to have that as a reference. I've got these feet for my stabilizer legs, except the design did not work as planned. I put these ribs on, and it's supposed to be like a TPU filament, flexible, but it's not flexible enough to stick this up into the hole. Um, please reserve your jokes. So this is my plan to put these ribs on, except there's not enough give, it's still too stiff, even though this is a overall flexible TPU filament. It wasn't too much trouble to just trim some off with the X-Acto knife. Ah, there we go, finally. I'll come down on an angle, it's still gonna be able to flex with the angle, like that. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some 120 grit sandpaper, just to start with. I might get up to 60 coarse grit. And I'm gonna sand this shaft, and I'm gonna sand the inside of the receiver tube. And I'm hoping that that'll deal with some of my slippage with these 3D printed clamps that I'm using. I'm putting too much force on the clamps and they're starting to break on me. So I think I had the idea all wrong with the WD-40. I wanna have some grit. Yeah, these stabilizer legs have been a real issue, but now they're working great. The sanding seemed to do the trick. Okay, 
Okay, it's finally solid as a rock. And not going anywhere. I know you can't really see because I'm shaking the camera and myself, but I'm shaking and the cyber drop is not shaking. Hello. It's pretty dark in here, so I'm gonna bring in one of my pot lights and just hook it up to this battery, 12 volts. I like it. Okay, I'm gonna spray glue the ceiling insulation panels to the ceiling. Once again, using the 3M77. Not sure how effective it is actually because I found the next day it hadn't stuck in all the places I had glued, but hopefully it's better than nothing. Ceiling is glued. I don't know if it was necessary, but I just didn't want to put the hall liner fabric and then have the panels falling down in the middle of the desert. Should be good to go for as long as my travels will take me. Deserts, rainforests, mountaintops. We're gonna go everywhere. We're gonna crawl the globe. We, why do I say we? I guess maybe I'm hoping some of you might tag along. It's nice to have company on each other's terms here with this wonderful YouTube invention. I'm using this Eternapon tape to seal any gaps, any weak points, including where I routed out the slots so that I could bend the ACM panels. It's okay. Eternabon, eternal. It's gonna be there forever. All right, I'm gonna use my mom's red nail polish to put on some indicator notice lines so that I can tell if the bolts have come loose underneath over time. So I'm gonna cap off the front of this tube here. Originally I was gonna weld it, create a nice stack of dimes. On second thought, I don't feel like taking the fork all off. So I'm gonna just JB weld it on. So I'm gonna sand it off the edges. JB weld, slap some duct tape on there, and then I'll come back off and grind it smooth so it's really nice. And that should do it. I'm just trying to decide where I want to put the pot lights. If I put one in the back here, I can angle it this way, kind of like for a reading light. If I have it right up here, you know, I don't want it just glaring right into my eyes, so. So right now the light's kind of close to the panel, but once it's re recessed back into the foam, I think that's gonna be quite a mood light. My goodness. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm starting to have these visions out in nature with beautiful lighting, reading David Copperfield. Been reading that book for three years. What's he doing in there? Working all day, doesn't check the mail anymore. What's he doing in there? If you haven't heard that Tom Waits song, do yourself a favor. It really describes how this build has felt. It's getting lost in it. Okay, cargo door slash dog door. We'll see. Picked it up on Amazon in case you want to freeze the frame there. Ta -da! So this is my wall thickness here. I just trace a line on the inside and I'm gonna grinder wheel this excess off so it doesn't protrude into the cabin. Make sure you use a full face mask if you do it that way. 3M tape and uh, challenge. All right, I'm not comfortable just using the 3M tape because as you can see here, it's not perfectly flush and straight. There's also a little lip on the inside of this. So I put the 3M tape all around, but I'm also gonna drill a hole in each corner and I bought these stainless steel machine screws number eight 32 everything's stainless I don't want to deal with rust now or in the future and I got these nylon nut locking nuts so I'll fasten the four corners and that should pull it all in it's got the 3m tape so between the four bolts and the 3m that's gonna be solid Come on, son. This was a big test here to see if my dog would actually go into this thing, but she slipped right in like an elegant fox. Ah, I'm still thinking I gotta bring her. I'm on the fence. Okay, there are two seams on the cyber drop that I need to cover with some custom bent angle. So I just went to a local fabricating shop in Peterborough, and this is 108 degrees for the back, and I got one for the front that's slightly different. 
I'm gonna spray paint them black with Trem Clad. This is just some protective film and we'll slap that on there. So the paint I bought is a flat black, but it doesn't really match the trims. So I think I'm gonna go over with a second coat and use a gloss or semi-gloss. The last thing I have to cut out is the back vent. Make sure Stella and I can breathe no matter what. So I put the fan high enough to allow clearance for bedding. So there's always airflow coming through. That's where it is on the back. Great. I found this material at my local restore for five bucks. Figure I'll use it for the mud flaps. And that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. A couple more to go, almost done, and then a battery of tests. And I promise I will show you exactly how this thing performs 